Well guys, doing something pretty unique today. A trout fishing friend of mine sent me a message earlier this winter and was like, the beavers in this trout stream are out of control. They dammed up the stream. It's negatively impacting the trout fishing. Uh, water's getting stagnant. He said it used to be one of his favorite streams all time. And uh, when I grew up, obviously I did some trapping with my dad and good family friend kind of mentored me and, and showed me how to trap, but I haven't done it in so long. So this spring I figured I'm gonna set some traps on this beaver, on this trout stream, try to catch some of these beavers. Obviously trapping can be kind of a controversial issue because some people, you know, you're killing the animal. Um, and while there is some sadness to that, they also need to be managed a little bit. In fact, a lot of times the DNR and nuisance trappers will trap beavers in the summer or even go in there and shoot them at night with thermal scopes to eliminate the beavers because they can cause, cause problems when they dam up uh, culverts and stuff like that. And to me, that's kind of sad because it's you can't even utilize the animal in the summer. They get shot, trapped, it's 80 degrees, their pelts are no good, and they just get thrown in the woods. Um, so for me, it's like, hey, that might happen anyway on this trout stream. If I can go in here in the springtime when the season is still open with my trapping license and I can trap these beavers, I'm going to be able to use their pelts. I can sell them, maybe even make something with them, uh, like a warm hat. You can also eat beaver meat. I kind of want to try that out, actually. Uh, I'm a little nervous about it, but they say it's really good, so I can utilize the meat of the animal. Obviously, uh, the tail is great for ice fishing bait and open water bait on jigs for panfish walleye. If you watched any of my past videos, you saw I did trap one this past December. And then um, I even am gonna tan the tan the tail to try to make a leather wallet. So yeah, long story short, that's what this is gonna be. I'm gonna bring my fishing uh, rod with me too. Maybe take a few casts for trout. See if I can't catch one of those. I set the traps yesterday. I set a total of ten traps in three different locations. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if we have anything here. Like I said, trapping can definitely definitely be a controversial issue and topic so I was a little hesitant to you know make a video out of this but before you judge something make sure you do your research and, and look into what what happens in a way our entire country was founded based on the history and tradition of beaver trapping that westward expansion uh, was so influential in our country developing it's part of our pastime as long as you do it respectfully, you know, try not to like decimate them. And if you're using the animal, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. So yeah, I'm excited. It's uh, if you've never trapped before, it's it's a pretty unique. How do I explain it? Like it's not like hunting, but it really helps you analyze sign. Like I feel like my I feel like growing up trapping helped me become a better hunter and just outdoorsman because like when I'm walking around in the woods I see sign in a different way like when you trap you're trying to set your traps where an animal's gonna step right you have to be very like meticulous in looking for sign and looking for the specifics of little tiny details so for beaver it's you know the smell of caster it's where they're where they're crawling up on the bank looking for tracks um, really helps me I feel like in, in more ways than just trapping but it's pretty unique so along the stream for beavers it's pretty obvious a telltale, a telltale sign is when you see dams and the spots that I was in obviously there were dams hence why I'm trapping them because they're damming up the trout stream if you're wondering why beavers and trout streams don't correlate and it's bad for trout habitat it essentially dams up the water to make a pond and as a result of it being a pond there's no longer the same flowing water stagnant water gets warm faster trout don't like warm water um, it gets more sediment built up mucky trout need gravel like reds and rock and fast flowing water in order to spawn so 
those are the those are the reasons um, you know why that is and it's not like they're bad initially right I think the main thing is if you let it sit too long that's where it's gonna be an issue um, I think beavers and trout can survive a little bit together but you can't let the beavers get completely out of control and for the record I'm not a fan of I'm not a fan of the DNR going in and killing them in the summer either I think that's kind of a, kind of sad and wasteful I feel like there's enough trappers that still you know have that pastime that they can reach out to actual trappers in the season to take care of that issue and the animal can actually be utilized Right? Beavers are a cool animal. I feel like you have to treat them with at least enough respect to trap them during the season and utilize them instead of just, you know, shooting them with an infrared scope at night and dumping them in the woods. So, well, that's my take on it. But anyway, we're here. Let's go check some traps. The anticipation of this is so exciting. And of course, I'm going to take a couple casts for trout while I'm back here. Got the waders on. Approaching the stream right now. Gosh, these pickers are gonna pop a hole in my waders if I'm not careful here. Oh, all right. I want to just rush over to check the traps, but I know I should take a cast in this pond first. It'd be cool to get thumped by a big old brown trout right now. I think I can see my conibear trap down there and it looks like nothing's on it. So that's a bummer. And that stake in the water. If you see that, oh, did I just have a bite? No. That stake in the water is my uh, my my drowning rig. So it, hey, I set it. Oh my gosh, guys! I think I got one. I think I got one. Hold up. Hold up. Holy smokes! It's deep, dude. It's like really deep. Like I can't cross here. I think I got one though. I gotta get around to that end. Let's see. Yes! Guys, there's a beaver right there. The drowning set worked perfect. Oh my gosh. Okay, so here's what I did. Let me just let me just get this trap out of here first so I can show you guys. Oh man, I didn't bring my stuff and it's freezing. It's like 38 degrees right now and I forgot my gloves in the truck. I'm gonna have to stick my hands in here. Ah, there's the tail. Nice. Shoot, how am I gonna get this up here? I caught him on the front foot and the slider rig is obviously stuck down at the bottom. Let's see here. This is. I do not want to have to stick my hand down into the bottom. This is why trappers have something called gauntlets. All right, I'm gonna pause the GoPro until I can figure this out. This is tough. I'm trying to do so. The slider it goes down and it won't go back up. That's how the beaver drowns. So. Uh, <laughs> It, it's doing its job. It's just really challenging and I'm trying to do everything without sticking my arm shoulder deep in this cold trout stream. I might just need to pull the pull the stake. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Let's go. That is a big old beaver. Perfect front paw catch right there. Usually I like to, people like to try to get him in the back 
back legs, but that did the job. So essentially, there was this run right here where you could see they were going up. So it was a nice little funnel. So I put my trap right there. This is a number five bridge or long spring. And uh, had it staked up here on that wire with my stick back there for the slider rig. Then I put a little bit of caster there. It's like a caster mound set. Oh. A great family friend of my dad and I who passed away, His name was Jack Kriegel. Um, he showed us how to do this, man. And it was, it's special. Every time I still kind of think of him. So, yeah. Got eight more to check though, so let's get this one undone. I'm gonna actually reset it and come back tomorrow too. Got him out of there. Whoa! That was almost scary. All right. So to set this massive trap, I do this method on my leg right here. Push this long spring down, hold that right there. Push the right one down, open it up. Now at this point, you gotta be careful because it would get you. So I push the dog down there and then I reach underneath here and push that pan up to hold it in place. That way if it does tr trigger, my hand is not in those jaws. At this point, I'm gonna just reset this so you can see the slider rig can't go this way because of the direction it is, but it can easily slide this way, but then can't go back. That's right there in a good spot. And then I'm gonna try to go stake this back to the best of my ability. My see, the issue now is I don't have my hammer I feel like I need to do something different with this. I'm gonna try to find a big rock or something. All right, I'm jimmy rigging this giant rock up here. Hoping if I just drop that to the bottom, it's gonna be enough weight. And I'll just double check that the placement of my trap is good. I don't want to just stick my hand down there and find it right now. That would be bad. Oh yeah, it moved. Yikes. All right. There we go. Hopefully has another one tomorrow. I don't think I'm going to be trout fishing while I lug this guy around. He's heavy. Oh, my hands are freezing. Gotta take a cast right here though. Can't even feel my fingers. Whew. Catch my breath a bit, holy cow. I feel like there could be a big trout hanging out right in that. Under, down the tree there. Alright, two more, two, two more traps to check at this spot, and we're on to a new spot. Ah. So you can already see this downed tree right here is where I set another beaver trap, and oh my gosh, we got another one right there, guys. Back foot catch, I set it right here. I had that beaver trap set where he was coming up to eat on these. And right there, sure enough, another beaver. That is awesome. Look at that. Not sure, yeah, he shows up well. Water's clear right now, back foot catch. I put the rock down there for a drowning rig. And once again, I talked about reading sign. It's pretty obvious to see where these beavers were going up here. 
Look at all the, the chewing up there on the trees. That's another thing, they just decimate trees around here too. And then they have to move on because they kind of eat it out and it's all, they just decimate it and then there's no food left and that's when they move on to a different area. I'm gonna fish this stretch up and check that last trap first. Actually, no, I'll get these, I'll get this guy out and get him on the bank. My hands are already freezing cold, so might as well. This one looks a little smaller than the last one, but still a adult, adult beaver. So I'll just get it set right away. Whew. Woofka. Let's top this off and catch a trout. I have one more trap up here. It's a conibear trap. See all this water is just muck. Not ideal trout habitat, especially later in the summer. This is all gonna just be choked with weeds. You can already see weeds on the bottom. The hands are freezing. One of my favorite things is are these rechargeable battery hand warmers. Ooh, they help, because even if your hands are a little wet, you can still use them just fine. So right here, this is another perfect example. If I was setting more traps, I'd definitely put one right here. I mean, that's called mudding, right? They kind of pull up vegetation and stuff they'll sit here eat look at here's probably his snack from yesterday right just sitting right here and then there's the trail where they go up to chew down more trees i'd love to catch a trout but it's lost a lot of the trout habitat that it used to have According to my friend Ron, who reached out to me, man, he's he was like, please help get some out of here, Jackson. They are decimating it. Wow, number three. Unreal. Three of them out of here. This one's in the conibear. So there was this kind of bundle of sticks. I wouldn't even say it was a, it doesn't really look like it's an actual dam made by a beaver. But you could see right here, there was this little run through it. And uh, yeah, I put a conibear trap right in there. And as you can see, he got got. So these are killing traps. They instantly get absolutely crushed by it. That's one thing I like about beaver trapping is it, it's very ethical right away. It's not like a trap, is, it's not like any of these animals were sitting alive in a trap for a full day before I checked them. Wow, I'm gonna have to just bring this whole thing back. Oh my gosh, look at I didn't have a spring. I had a spring that didn't engage and it still worked for him, surprisingly. That's crazy. Dang, just set that conibear with my bare hands. Usually I gotta use a rope, but I forgot that in the truck. So yeah, conibear trap swims through that and it clamps them. 
So here's how you set this thing. So you go like that, and then you pray it doesn't trigger on you. Turn it. I like to turn it like this. Then I slide it down here. And pretty much set that right in that run to make it, you know, welcoming to a beaver. It looks like that guy was going upstream, swam right into it and to put a cross piece. Something like this to stabilize that other side. So yeah, then I just kind of barricade <coughs> with some other sticks to make it him want to funnel into there. Um, one of the rules too, if you're using a 330, it has to be at least half underneath the water. So, yeah. I'm gonna have a heavy walk back to the truck. I should have brought my compass cart. I have it tomorrow, I'm gonna use it. I wasn't planning on doing it today, but. That's a good start, I'd say. Wow. Oh, let's get them back to the truck. Seriously, I wish I would have brought my compass cart to show you how that works. It's super cool. It's like a hitch hauler hooked up to my truck. It would have been perfect for this. I left it, but I'll have it tomorrow. On to the next spot. Wow. It's 42 degrees, but it feels like it's 90. Lugging. Lugging those bad boys out of the woods. Yeah, I guess that was a really optimistic start. Got six more traps to check. If that success rate keeps up, oh, it's a pretty good sign. So far, I'm really pleased. Everything's working well. Everything Jack Kriegel taught me, I'm putting it to, to use right now. So that's super cool. Two on the caster mounds, one in the conibear. These next six traps, I think I have four caster mounds and one conibear. Spot number two. Ron just texted me. See, look at, you can tell, I mean, look at the beavers are in here. It's just silly. It's like I'm walking a major trail. But Ron just texted me. All right, when I got out of the truck at this spot, any beavers today? I sent him the picture of those three. He's gonna be pretty excited. Oh, but man, it's a, just an absolute trail right here. This is actually a different trout stream now. So here once again, I'm just setting that right in here. Kind of walled off some sticks, so if a beaver wants to go up it, it has to go this direction. And uh, yeah, that's good to go. I will show you when I talk about caster mounds. This is uh, what my bait is for caster mounds. The beavers have a gland called caster. In fact, their scientific name is called caster canadensis. And this is that gland, which has a very, very distinct smell. Believe it or not, you can sell caster too. It's used in a lot of perfumes and stuff like that. So yeah, ironically, a lot of anti-trappers, you know, being Karens on the internet, probably use perfume that has castor in it. Next time you look at the ingredients, look for a, if you see the word castor, it's literally the gland of a beaver. It has a pretty unique smell to it. 
And that's what that gland is. I put a little of that, stick it on a stick right up here. Beaver's cruising around and they smell that and they want to come check it out. Especially in the springtime, they're really territorial. They're traveling a lot more away from their, their lodge. Coming up on another trap here. Oh, I do not see the trap. I don't think I do anyway. But I also don't see a beaver. Oh, sprung. Trap here is sprung. So had had one come up here. This is only a bridge or four long spring, so maybe that's part of the reason. That's what's cool about leaving it another day. I'll probably freshen it up with some fresh caster. Let's see, where did I have it? I think I had it like right there. It seems like a good spot. I'm gonna leave it right there. There's the caster. Beaver cuttings were right here. I set a trap right there, nothing touched it. Huh. Got two more down here. Yep, we got one here. Caster mound set going up to that run. Oh shoot, it's all tangled around there though. Here goes this again. Gosh. Holy smokes, dude. This thing was not getting away. Holy crap. I pounded this in with a sledgehammer, apparently. I mean, I actually did. Goodness gracious, dude. I'm sure there's a kink in that wire. something right there there we go last trap of the day number four way on the upper leg that's like a darker beaver it's like a black beaver setting this trap right now underwater. My hands are very not warm right now. But luckily, got a lot of circulation going from lifting up that giant stake. There we go. Get this guy reset. Little guy compared to the other ones, but beautiful animal though. Might as well freshen this up with a bit of caster also. I'm gonna have no shortage of caster now with these four beavers. that one I might get tanned or something just because of how unique it is the other ones I'll probably sell since they're bigger and they'll fetch more money so we'll see what tomorrow's check brings day two checking chilly this morning 36 
I should give a shout out to this brand of heated vest that I'm wearing. It's called Kemimoto. I'm not sure if it shows up with the, the red lights there, but essentially it's a heated battery power, battery power heated vest. Um, not only does it heat the core, but it has this hood with these little heaters right on the ears and stuff. It's a game changer for doing stuff like this. I absolutely love it. Um, if you do any type of cold water, cold weather, anything, I recommend one because it allows you to stay warm, but then when I'm like going and hiking in to get these traps, I can just turn it off and I'm not too bundled up where I'm going to be sweating. So it's, uh, it's really convenient for that aspect. All right. For today, I actually did hook the compass card up. So I'm going to take advantage of that. This thing is mainly used for deer hunting, but I feel like it has a very practical use for trapping. Hitch hauler slash deer cart, game cart at the same time. Really convenient. Yesterday when I had those three, it would have been helpful. <laughs> this thing can go on quite the, quite off terrain. These tires are solid tires, so they can't go flat. Put that kickstand down, leave it here for now. Check these traps. I'm actually starting at the spot I ended yesterday. This one's still setting. Jeez. Pretty sure that's a beaver track right there though. Bugger climbed up right here. I guess I didn't block this off enough. Looks like he could have climbed up right there. Or on the other side of that log, honestly, but... Oh well. Can't catch them all. Shut up, Goose. Well, we got... A, caught a stick in this one in the Kana bear, and the one that I caught the black beaver in yesterday is also setting. Huh. <sighs> Obviously didn't get anything, but here's the part that's super slick with this compass cart. You just line up those grooves and it slides right up. Pull the wheels down. And then right there, it's a single pin. Right there and it's locked into place. If you have a bunch of beavers on this, deer, whatever, it's out of the way then you can can drive with it so especially if you don't want to like when i shot my deer this year and i didn't want to get all a bunch of blood in the bed of the truck this was real nice we got one more over here this is the one that sprung the trap on me yesterday so i'm really wanting redemption on this guy and I don't see the trap. Dang. Sprung again. Sprung again right here and he pulled it down. Ah. Well, it's all part of it, I suppose. All part of the game. Sometimes the beavers win. That's what makes it that's what makes it fun. If the beavers never won, it wouldn't even be fun. I'm gonna be wanting redemption on these guys next year. No luck on this one. Oh nice, got one here. 
Heck yeah. So this one I actually set right on the dam. You can see where they're crossing. And he got smacked. Big one too. Heck yes. Sweet. Perfect conibear catch. This right here is exactly how you want to do it. Oh, perfect kind of bear catch. No suffering. Uh, of course I chose not to bring the compass cart for this one. But with all these chewed sticks, it would be really tough to navigate it. Holy smokes, dude. Thing is heavy. Got four traps back here. I'm gonna go check that conibear first where I caught the, the one yesterday in that conibear. And then we'll see. Nothing in this one this time. So I'll use this as an opportunity to show you like what uh, normally happens. So yesterday, here's what it was. Beaver was swimming upstream, and then right here, there's a trigger in there, and when he pushes on that thing, bam. That's how a conibear works. Nothing on this guy today. Yeah, major jinx by bringing the uh, compass cart here to this one. Didn't get any of them. Here's a fancy way to uh, trip the trap. Push from underneath this. Wham! That would not feel good if it was my finger. <laughs> 